Welcome to our 2017 end of the year special at Price This House. I'm Dave O'Neill from Century 21 North Shore and O'Neill in North Reading. And I'm Kimberly O'Neill Mara, also with Century 21 North Shore and O'Neill. Just on a little personal note, we thought we'd address the name change. Uh, as most of you know, we've been listing and selling homes in North Reading since 1978. And this past year, we did merge with a much larger company. We had two offices and about 40 agents, and we joined the premier office of Century 21 in New England. The number one office, Century 21 North Shore, and the North Reading location will be, now be known as Century 21 North Shore and O'Neill. We're part of this conglomerate that has done $1 billion in closed sales in 2017, and we have 700 agents in about 43 offices in Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Maine. So we're looking forward to bringing a lot of new tools and technology to help our buyers and sellers with their real estate transactions. However, Dave and I are both still located at 247 Main Street right here in North Reading and looking forward to continuing to serve this community. That's right. Um, 2017 was a great year in the real estate market. According to MLS, there were over 160,000 listings in Massachusetts in 2017 and over 87,000 homes that sold. And there are over 25 million searches performed on MLS. That's pretty incredible. Like Dave said, we are the number one Century 21 in New England and sold over a billion dollars as a company in this last year. We're really excited about that. And our, number, our company ranks number 10 of all Century 21 offices in the United States and number 19 of all Century 21 offices in the world. Amazing. Very, very impressive and we're thrilled to be part of it. And now to share the year-end review facts with you, we're going to go to um, review the four communities that we've been discussing over the years, being North Reading, Reading, Linfield, and Andover. And to get to that, we're going to go to just the facts. Starting with North Reading, single-family homes, there was 178 homes sold in 2017 versus 180 in 2016. The average list price was $596,000 versus $582,000 in 2016. The average sale price, $597,000 versus $566,000 in 2016. And days on market, 29 versus 34 in 2016. And the average price per square foot was $275 versus $252 in 2016. So as you can see, it's a solid improvement year over year, and North Reading continues to be one of the premier communities north of Boston. We're now going to go to North Reading condos, 54 homes sold versus 54 in 2016. The average list price, 330000 versus 321000 in 2016. Average sale price, 331000 versus 319000 Average days on market, 23 versus 39 in 2016. Quite an improvement there. Average price per square foot is 256000 versus 235000 in 2016. So for North Reading multifamilies, it's one property sold in both 2016 and 2017. Last year, it was 479000 versus 500000 this year. 450000 last year for average sale price versus 520000 this year. Days on market, 43 versus 28 this year. At price per square foot, 166 last year and 205 this year. So as you can see, pretty much a level market, but certainly a healthy market when you see the prices ticking up like that. And North Reading land, there were three parcels sold this year versus four in 2016. The average list price was 365000 versus 604000 in 2016. Now remember, that's not necessarily apples and apples. Could be lot sizes and so forth that will determine the pricing. Average sale price, 365000 in 2017 versus 520000 in 2016. And the day, days to the offer is 195 for this year versus 58 last year. Again, different sizes, different uh, locations will determine land value versus in a house you can pretty much compare size, square footage, and so forth. It's also hard to compare three or four properties per year um, for year over year versus 180 homes, and right. it's kind of easier to extrapolate mm -hmm. the data. But it's certainly nice to see the days to offer decreasing mm -hmm. and the price per square footage increasing. 
Goes Can't back get any better than that. The market is very, very hot right now. Exactly. Um, now to discuss the Reading market for single-family homes in Reading. In 2017, there were 256 homes sold versus 223 in 2016. The average list price was 619,000, which was up from 538,000 in 2016, mm -hmm. which was a great increase. Um, the average sale price was 633,000, up from 544,000 in 2016. The average days to offer was 20 this year versus 22 last year, and the average price per square foot was $306 per square foot versus 281 the year before. That's great to be over $300 yeah. um, per square foot. Um, North Reading's at 275. Um, re uh, the Reading condo community, um, 135 so homes sold versus 151 a year ago. The average list was 443,000 versus 430 in 2016, and the average sale price was 444,000 versus 428,000 in 2016. Days to offer was 34 versus 25 a year ago, and the average price per square foot was $326 versus 319 in 2016. Again, a nice increase. Multifamilies in Reading, there are actually 11 multifamilies that sold in 2017 versus only two a year ago. Uh, the average list price was 591,000 versus 417, and the average sale was 582 versus 398. Now again, keep in mind the number of units could vary, so you could be talking a two family versus a six family home will, it will have a, a drastic price difference. The days uh, to offer on average was 25 this year versus 13 in 2016, and the average price per square foot was 236 versus 229. We had no land sell in Reading this year. There wasn't any available. Um, there's only one lot that was sold last year. So again, the, um, the averages are a little bit of uh, a silly fact here. 2016, we had one um, that listed for 499 and sold for 450 um, in five days. And again, this year we had none. Now let's go over to Linfield. Linfield had 157 homes sold versus 121 last year. Average list price was 727,000 versus 724,000 last year. Average sale price was 713,000 versus 708,000. Days to offer is 35 versus 34. Average price per square foot was $276 versus 262 last year. Linfield condos, there were 30 homes this year versus 28 last year. Average list price was 564 versus 584. Average sale price 561 versus 579. Average days on market 554 versus 157 last year. And average price per square foot 284 versus 270. Not that the market's necessarily going down, but when you're talking a small per percentage, it sometimes will look like a negative. But again, that's based on size and square footage and so forth. No multifamilies in Linfield sold at all. And in Linfield land, there were five parcels sold, uh, both last year and this year. List price was five, 610 this year versus 416. Average sale price, 571,000 versus 389 in 2016. And the average days to offer is 28 versus 97. Again, that's that same thing. You just don't know until you look at all the specifics. Andover. All right, moving on to Andover. Um, we had 375 single-family homes sell in 2017 in Andover versus 369 a year ago. It continues to be a really strong market. Um, the average list price was 699000 versus 671 a year ago, and the average sale price was 696000 versus 658 a year ago. So great um, you know, sale-to-list price ratio right there. The data offer was um, 36 versus 42 a year ago, and the average price per square foot is 257 versus 240 in 2016, so that jumped up pretty well. Um, the average, um, uh, excuse me, the Andover condo market had 152 homes sell versus 122 a year ago, with an average list price of 415,000 versus 365,000. Again, that's just the types of um, condos that were on the market. Um, the average sale was 411, and the average uh, in 2016 was 359. The average days to offer was 40 this year versus 42 a year ago. And the average price per square foot was 268 versus 239 in 2016. For Andover multifamilies, we had eight homes sell in 2017 versus five a year ago. 
The average list price was four eighty seven versus five seventeen in two thousand sixteen. The average sale was four hundred eighty three thousand in two thousand seventeen versus five hundred and six a year ago. And the average days to offer was thirteen versus thirty four a year ago. The average price per square foot was two hundred eight versus one hundred eighty four. Now for land in Andover, we had five parcels sell versus eight in 2016. The average list was 1.4 million versus 354,000 in 2016. Now, that's obviously a staggering difference, mm -hmm. and I just want to make a small note that 139 Elm Street had a 10-acre parcel that was listed for 4.9 million and sold for 4.7 million. So that one transaction alone um, really skewed the data um, for Andover land this year, um, having our average sale price be 1.3 million versus 341,000. That's um, that's the major reason for that discrepancy. The average days to offer was 221 this year versus 40 in 2016. Days to offer also had to do with that because there were um, there was quite a bit of controversy going back and forth on what that land was going to be used for um, right near the center of town. Um, and that really concludes our facts, uh, or just the facts segment, and we're going to take a quick break and come back with Talk of the Town. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now it's time for our segment, Talk of the Town. I'm very pleased to introduce you to local real estate attorney and North Reading Selectman, Andy Schultz. Andy, welcome. Thanks for having me. Um, why don't we just start, go right to it, and what's new in the North Reading Town Hall and what's new in the North Reading uh, political world? What's new in North Reading Town Hall? The biggest thing we have is the sale of the J.T. Berry parcel, mm -hmm. which uh, got northwards of $20 million to our town coffers. Mm -hmm. That money has to be used for certain things, such as infrastructure, um, uh, it's earmarked to what it can be used for. Essentially, infrastructure is, is fine. And we're looking at as a board at different ways of inve investing that money so we can get a return back to the town year over year. Are there any leading causes that you're, you're planning for at this point? Well, we just started the process. My, one of my things that I actually ran on during the campaign last year and I, that I'm very a big proponent of is sewerage in commercial areas. I think we really need to get sewerage on Concord Street from, say, the Bobcat out to 93, develop that area commercially, mm -hmm. which will increase our commercial tax base which in turn will lessen the burden on our residents. That's a good plan. Yeah. Can you talk about what the, is planned for the property as of now? On the Berry property, it's going to be a Pulte Homes bought it, mm -hmm. and it's going to be an over 55 uh, complex. Mm -hmm. There'll be hundreds of homes that are in there, and again, it's over 55, so it should not drain the schools. And um, they've actually already started doing work over there. I'm not sure when they're going to be done, but they've already started digging. And they're, yeah, I've seen them they're clear plugging some along trees. over there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's moving fast. So now, other than the sewer um, component of things, of ways to spend the money, are there other things that you're considering? Or is that kind of the leading well, course Pul right now? Pulte Homes alone will give us $3 million of property tax revenue a year into the town, um, just from the property taxes on the units when they are sold. Mm -hmm. As far as my... We only have but one chance to when we get that type of money coming in. It really never has happened before to us as a town. So you only get one shot to do this. You want to do it right. In my opinion, we need to invest in things that are going to increase our tax base and increase the revenue we get back year over year. There are things we need like a town hall, a new fire station, a new DPW, a new senior center. I just think if you spend that money on one-off projects, you spent the money and you have those buildings, which is nice, but then that's it. If you invest in infrastructure, you increase your tax base, now you have that money to do all those things, and yet still have the infrastructure that you put in. It's kind of a win-win for the town. And how does that get done? Well, that's just a lot of, that's a, that's, that's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, essentially, we're working uh, with different groups. Right now, we have an issue with our water long-term, um, whether we go with the town of Andover, the NWRA. The NWRA would likely offer us sewer options on Concord Street. Um, Andover could conceivably offer us sewer options on the Greater Lawrence Sewer District down 28. So there's all different things we're looking at, and there's, there's a lot of balls in the air right now as far as which way we're going to go on that issue. And what other types of infrastructure are you talking about or considering? Well, I think we need a new town hall. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's seen town hall knows it's a tired building. Mm -hmm. I think we need new senior housing, mm -hmm. um, and we need a new senior center. We can do better for our seniors. I'm not crazy about the way our current senior housing looks over at Peabody Court. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think those are issues. I think you always want to build a property tax base where we don't have seniors and people that are retired being taxed out of the town. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some of that. I have people that have called about that. We're looking at ways to structure even things like the trash pickup where those who use less pay less and, you know, just try to make it more equitable for everybody. 
Now that's been a hot topic on Facebook is the recent trash. Yes, uh, it has. <laughs> and recycling. Do you have anything that you want to uh, comment on? Sure. Well, the trash contract is up, coming mm -hmm. up, I think, at the end of June. So we're looking at different vendors and different approaches, um, whether we keep it all manually or have an automatic trash pickup where the, the arm comes off the truck mm -hmm. and dumps the trash itself. Um, also, I think we're going to be probably looking at a multi-day pickup where different areas of the town will have a different day. Mm -hmm. They'll have this, every house will have the same day each week, but there might be four different areas of the town that have four different days, something like that. Okay. Um, that's much more cost effective. Trash has gone up quite a bit since the last contract. Um, believe it or not, it's due to some stuff that happened in China with recycling and, and, and trash, and that's mm -hmm. impacted us, our cost here, especially on the recycling side. Well, that's amazing because you don't think of North Reading being affected by international effects like that. You don't. Uh, yeah. On recycling, it absolutely has. And I was surprised when I heard that as well. Yeah, that's interesting. Very interesting. So the schools were pretty much set on the schools for a while. So we shouldn't have to spend much money there. Yeah, as a real estate attorney, uh, I always ask people when they move into the town, you know, why did you pick North Reading? And the number one answer is always the schools, the schools, and the schools. Okay. So the schools, and, and you guys would know this better than I would, the schools are a big calling card right now. Mm -hmm. They are bringing new people and new money into the town. Right. I think that's a good thing. I have two children in the school district myself. Right. Yeah. Um, the desirability of the community. I'm sure when you go out and talk to people uh, in other communities and so forth and they hear you from North Reading, you hear it the same way we do, that, um, you know, it's like the hottest place north of Boston right now. It really is. It's, you know, you're with no traffic, you're 20 minutes from the garden and you get an acre of land. And how many towns can say that? You know, I remember when I first moved here, um, we had a small lot where we used to live and come out here. I felt like a farmer. I had a whole acre. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's nice. So is there anything else that's a hot topic that you want to discuss and let our viewers know about? Uh, just we want to keep the, the we want to increase the commercial tax base so we can keep the residential tax base in check. Um, that's always a battle that we have. Everybody wants services, but nobody wants to pay for them. And that's mm -hmm. a common theme with any local government. Um, I really think we need to increase our, you know, I would love to see hotels, restaurants, car dealerships, more retail more upscale stuff, on, especially Concord Street, which is right off of 93. If we can get commercial sewerage in there, you're going to get those things moving in there because, it, you know, to a developer, they don't want to be on 28. They want to be right off 93. Mm -hmm. And if you look at, say, from Woburn up to Andover, there's not one hotel on that stretch. And there's mm -hmm. all those businesses. I would love to have a place where you could have conferences, you could have weddings, you could have functions. Um, you know, we just don't have that kind of space in North Reading right now that I think we could definitely use as our population grows. So the timeline would be, you know, get the sewerage in, get the big commercial properties in that are going to add to our tax base so that we can then use that tax money to build out the infrastructure of the senior center, the town hall, things of that nature? Yeah, in a sense, yeah. I mean, you have to build up the base uh, first before you can afford to bond and borrow to build these other projects. But these are all good projects that all need to be done. I mean, I just today I was a, I took a tour of the DPW facility, and that, that's going to need to be replaced at some point. And mm -hmm. We have a lot of tired buildings in town, and, uh, you know, we want to make sure we have you know, quality municipal buildings. Great. Yeah. As long as we can keep the tax base low. That's the, always the battle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the nice thing about the um, Pulte development being over 55 mm -hmm. in terms of um, talking about like the, how it relates to the school and who's paying for the school and the tax base for that, correct? Yeah, I mean, the schools are probably, the, oh, not probably, are the biggest expenditure we have in our town. And if we can lower, you know, if we can increase the tax revenue but not increase the number of pupils, that's going to help us out in that regard. Right. And there's about 400 units going in there, is that correct? I believe 350, 350. or so. Okay. Yeah. In the ballpark. Great. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Well, we thank you for your time today. Thank you. It's always uh, a pleasure to see you and uh, appreciate you sharing your knowledge and uh, all the information on the town. Right. Thank Th you. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll, we'll be right back. Well, that's great of Andy to share all of that foresight of the town. We yeah. really appreciate Andy taking the time from his busy schedule to join us. Um, just wanted to go back to the numbers for a second there. We throw a lot of numbers at you when we're going through these different uh, scenarios. If you have any questions about the market, if you have any questions about how your home or your property fits into the numbers that we're talking about, don't ever hesitate to give us a call or you can email us. We have a special account set up for questions. If you have anything that you want to discuss in person or have um, brought up on the show, feel free to email Dave and me at price.thishouse at century21.com. Our next section, we're going to talk about Spotlight, and we're going to talk about $1 million, what it will buy you in each of the four towns that we talk about, mm -hmm. which is uh, quite interesting. 
Uh, the first property, I guess I'm supposed to go first. The first property we're going to talk about in North Reading, 24 Shasta Drive, was listed at 999000 sold for 980000 It was 10 rooms, 4 bedrooms, 3 and a half baths, absolutely pristine condition inside and out, and it has 400... I'm sorry, it has 4,650 square feet of living area, and that does include an 1,100 square foot finished basement. And it sits on over an acre of land, and as everybody knows, Shasta Drive is a premier location in town. So again, that home was listed at a million, sold for 980,000, and was not on the market very long. It was only on for 29 days. So that tells you even at the million dollar mark, properties are uh, not staying on the market very long. Uh, you're next. Okay. Um, the highlighted property that we're going to spotlight in Reading is 105 Prescott Street. Um, it was uh, a completely redone colonial. It was absolutely stunning. Both the living room and dining room had beautiful custom built cabinets um, that could keep you completely organized. The sound system remained um, for everyone to enjoy on both levels, and it was just a fabulous home for entertaining. It was a nine room, four bedroom two full and two half bath home with including a master bath. It was 3,400 square feet. Um, and the thing about Reading, it was on just a quarter of an acre, but that's how they still have um, some smaller lots um, in Reading than they do in North Reading. Um, but it had five units, uh, five zones of heat, four central air zones, um, you name it. It was, um, you know, there were, there were spacious rooms on the lower level plus a half bath um, in the finished basement as well. So this was on the market for 999000 and also sold for 980000 um, That was on the market for 52 days. Um, it came out at the end of spring market. Um, it was absolutely a beautiful, um, you know, stunning colonial um, that sold for 980000 in Reading. The next property we're going to talk about is 4 Cranberry Lane in Linfield. Listed at 995000 and sold for 975000 Eight rooms, three bedrooms, three full and two half baths. Um, did have 34,000 square foot lot. Has over 6,219 square feet of living area. It does include a finished basement. And it also has a three-car attached garage. The home inside was just spectacular. Soaring ceiling heights. Field stone fireplace, lots of daylight, lots of windows, and just a truly spectacular home. Again, for Cranberry Lane in Linfield, uh, big brick colonial at 975000 So that gives you a pretty good idea of what um, you can buy in Linfield. Um, and lastly, we have Andover. We have two Stafford Lane in Andover. Um, this was also listed at 999 That was our magic number for the show. Um, and it sold at 975 as well. This was an 11 room, four bedroom home with two baths and uh, one half bath. It included a master bathroom. It had three fireplaces. This was um, a beautiful home on a cul-de-sac in the Andover Country Club neighborhood. It featured an oversized eating kitchen, a first floor private home office, um, tons of built-ins, a family room with a fireplace and a sunroom with access to a deck and a full-size awning um, overlooking the backyard. Upstairs, there were four spacious bedrooms, including a master suite that had a, a private fireplace and a private balcony overlooking views of Hussey's Pond. Um, really a beautiful property, 4,300 square feet plus an additional 1,500 square feet in the basement. It was a, you know, a, a huge, huge home. Um, very lovely. Again, sold for nine seventy-five dollars in Andover. Very, very impressive homes. Uh, the market is hot in all price ranges. If you're in a starter home, a little bit larger, or into one of these much, uh, much grand scale homes, uh, the market is healthy. If you own a home, looking to sell it, this is an ideal time. There are a lot of buyers. And if you're a buyer, this is the time before all the spring market buyers really get out um, that you can maybe have a little bit of a choice. So uh, I guess now, Kim, we're gonna turn to Beantown and Beyond. Sure. I just want to talk a little bit about the Seaport District. It's really, um, it's an amazing area. I myself lived in South Boston for many years before moving to North Reading almost 10 years ago. Um, and when I'm back there, almost on a daily basis, it's amazing that a new hotel, a new condo, a new apartment building, a new restaurant will go up almost on a daily basis. And so there's quite a variety of, um, of types of real estate to purchase there or to lease. They have a lot of um, 
they have some of these new micro units that are just kind of small little efficiencies. If someone's looking for an office space or um, a hotel alternative, if they're working in Boston and don't want to do the commute every day, they might spend a night or two a week in one of these smaller places, either to rent or to own. Um, there's also, you know, luxurious, you know, penthouse units that are, you know, take over the whole floor that are, you know, multi, multi, multi millions. Um, so there's quite a variety, but there are things in all price points, uh, again, for rent or for sale. Um, and it's just kind of a hot community. It's super easy to get to from um, Andover, North Reading, Reading, and Linfield, a quick uh, hop down the highway and, um, you know, can be a nice place to have a pied a terre Or if you're thinking of downsizing and moving into the city, there's so many restaurants and shops and things like that. It's really a nice location. So if anyone's considering doing some sort of move like that, we have a ton of experience um, between Dave and me in the Boston area, um, know the buildings and um, the upcoming builds very, very well. So if you're looking for any insight information on that, please let us know as well. And we're also going to close the show with something to think about. And this is North Reading's uh, newest project we talked about a little bit earlier. The Martin's Landing homes being built by Pulte. They'll be um, over 55 and approximately 350 to 400 units. And they're designed to be absolutely exquisite. They're just starting the subdivision now, so there's a little bit of time. So we just kind of wanted to reach out to you and let you think about it a little bit. If you're at that point, maybe you want to go into a condo, 55 and over, and you want some details on the newest uh, accommodations in town, feel free to give us a call. We'd love to sit down with you, talk to you, and maybe help you guide you through the process of selling one home and buying another. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us today. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Dave or me directly, or you can email us at price.thishouse at century21.com. We really appreciate your loyalty and your support throughout the years and look forward to a fabulous upcoming spring market and a wonderful 2018. Thank you so much for joining us. And a special thank you to Andy Schultz, real estate attorney and selectman for the town of North Reading. Thank you.